All right, welcome back to Panic Inc. Custom Shops YouTube channel. Uh, today we have a video that I have been anxiously waiting for, and hopefully you guys have been keeping up and you're anxious for it too. Uh, today we're going to actually wire our Peg CD custom pickups into the showcase base with our Hoagland custom wiring harness. Um, pretty straightforward. Hoagland provided a great diagram to follow. Uh, everything is color coded to match. They provided plenty of wire on the components that have to be wired in, um, including on the switch for the series parallel and the three-way switch. Everything is right here in the diagram, uh, custom to this particular wire harness. Now, one thing I did off camera, um, a couple of things here. The wiring diagram calls for a bare wire. Um, the pickup actually didn't have the bare wire exposed on the the wiring coming from it. So what I did is I cut the sheathing back a little bit to get this bare wire. Um, your north finish and south finish wires on the pickup are red and white. If they aren't already soldered together, solder them together, which I did here. Uh, and I put a piece of heat shrink tube on it. Then I took my piece of uh, bare shielding wire, actually tinned the wire. Um, I put some flux on it, some of our solder flux. Got it on there. Got a nice little thin coating of solder over it. And then I put a heat shrink on it as well. Uh, what that does is that makes the end stiff so it's not going to unravel when you try when you're trying to connect it to another wire uh, the main things you're going to need you'll need a set of wire snips you need a set of strippers that are for the correct gauge wire you're working with of course you're going to need a soldering iron, some flux, some solder, and some heat shrink tube to cover up the connections that we're going to be making on this, on the uh, series parallel switch. Actually going to get a couple of pieces of our green tubing as well because we have green wires there. So, all right, let's get started. Now we've let our soldering iron come up to heat, and the first thing we're going to do here is wire up. The end phase reverse phase mini switch. Um, we've got our diagram here from Hoagland Custom. And what we're going to be doing is Connecting these three wires to these three wires. Pretty simple process. Strip back a little bit here. down 
have a flux on there. Take our soldering iron. We're going to get a little solder on the tip. Good solid connection there. Slide our heat shrink tubing up into place. And shrink it. Then the next one will be our south start which is our green wire on the pickup. And same thing here. Little dab of flux. heat shrink tube on because once it's connected can't put it on there little dab of solder good solid connection Shrink. Last but not least, we have our bear wire shield. Same process, heat shrink tube. Small dab of flux. Solder on our tip. Good solid connection. Heat shrink. Now, the long black and green wires we have here will be connecting onto the harness our long black wire will tie in right here on the same lug with the black wire that that's already in place on the bridge volume potentiometer Then our green wire will tie in with one of our grounds. 
either here or on the uh, the volume pot but we have a good good spot here we're gonna attach it on the bar the bridge tone control Now there's already plenty of solder on the volume pot lug to get this in there. So what we're going to do is we're going to heat up the existing solder to get this guy in there with the existing wire. We've got, got them out, got it open. Going to give it a little bit of a twist to twist these guys together on a bare wire. Slide those in through the lug. Just a little bit more solder. Not a lot. We're not trying to, to kill it. We're just getting a little bit on there so that the whole so the hole closes up both wires are securely soldered into the lug. But at the same time, we want to make sure that everything heats up good enough to give us a good solid connection uh, so the solder melts and flows into where it goes don't want any cold solders that are are not firmly soldered to the lug uh, that's going to cause you problems it'll cause noise um, intermittent cutting out a lot of problems i see a lot of people in different facebook groups talking about uh, as far as wiring I would say the vast majority of it can be traced back to just simply cold solders so want to avoid those now for our ground take a little dab of our flux <clears throat> I'm actually going to add a little bit of solder
on the potentiometer. Not a lot. We're not trying to to drown it. Just enough to so that it can melt. Good connection here with our ground wire. Just like that. Now we have the bridge pickup wired in on the harness. For our neck pickup, take and get our wiring pushed back some on the white and black wires the white being the hot wire of the pickup black being the ground wire pick up and what I like to do with pushback wire go ahead and nip that end of it off if it's frayed because no amount of twisting will ever get that back like you want it so best just go ahead and push it back some and snip it and be done with it instead of trying to fight it now we're going to do the same thing here that we did with our bridge. Our white wire, which is our hot wire, is going to go into the same lug as the white wire. It's already on the pot. Add just a little bit of solder just to close up the hole. Now I got a little excess sticking out that I don't want. Clip that off. Now our hot wire is connected. Our ground wire will do the same as we did with the ground wire for the bridge pickup. Connect it to a ground lug. Get a little bit of flux here. Gonna add a little bit of solder. Now one tip I recommend if you are starting with fresh potentiometers 
I always like to take my Dremel with a sanding wheel and I'll actually sand down a spot on the potentiometer where I'm making these connections that gives it just a little something rougher that it can stick to um, that's just my personal preference like I said if you're starting with a if you're making your own wiring harness directly makes it stick a little better all right that's firmly glued into our ground area and that has our pickups actually wired in to the harness now our next step is we have a three wire or excuse me a three-way switch that we'll be wiring in for all these pickups um, another thing that I did off camera, I went ahead and drilled all of my holes where everything is going to go. Just kind of made it a little easier. So what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to set this guy in place for where it'll be going so that we can get an idea of how much wire we're going to need for each one of these because we've got plenty of wire way more wire than than what we actually need our red is going to the neck Both of those can be snipped off right about there. Our white goes to the bridge. Our black wire goes to the output jack. Snip that off here. Then our green wire will be a ground and we'll take it to this lug here on the neck tone pot. First things first. this back a little bit and we're going to solder in our output jack same process as before flux going to come in from the bottom then we'll take our solder heat the lug up Just enough solder so that it bonds to the lug and completely covers the hole and gives us a solid connection. And we can take this nut off. Take this nut and washer off because we're 
actually using a modern a modern Telecaster style side jack. Uh, so for now, we're going to just get this guy out of the way by poking it down through our hole where it will be mounted and just letting it be out of the way. Then we're going to take our red wire here. It will actually go to the center lug on the volume pot. heated up get a little more solder on there basically want enough solder on it so that it closes the hole in the lug and we can heat that up get our wire through close the hole we have a good connection then we'll do the same thing here for our bridge volume with the white wire You'll find a whole lot of wiring and pickups, wiring harnesses is repetitive. Do one thing, make sure it's correct, do it again. So we're going to get a little bit of solder on there, just enough to close the hole. Once we heat it up, let's stick our wire through. And take just a tad more. Good solid connection, only touching the lug we want, not sticking through and touching on the side of the pot grounding out. Now, I'm going to go ahead, let's get our shielding ground back up here out of the way. I'm going to go ahead and drop these
into place. We only have one more here that we need to make a connection on. That's going to be our ground. And what I'm actually going to do here is I'm going to strip this a little bit long. And I'm going to double this up so that I can, I'll take and twist these wires together. And this gives us a ground that we can run out and connect to our shielding. solder then we'll heat that up Didn't want to cooperate. But okay, that's fine. From time to time, you'll have that. Um, just take your time. It will go into place, I promise you. Just don't get in a rush. Don't heat things up to the point of burning up the potentiometer. Make sure you've got a good, good ground. Now, I'll drop this guy into place as well. or trap behind it. Now we'll take our mini toggle and drop it into place.
<clears throat> now that we've got all of those in place, I want to take a minute here to flip the guitar up on its side. I have all the various nuts and washers. Uh, actually, hold on. Hold up. Wait a minute. Let me backtrack here. Got our lock washers. We forgot to put underneath these. So, I'm going to take these one at a time here. Put the lock washer on it. Stick it back. Okay, now we'll come around this side and we'll go ahead and put our nuts and washers on, just hand tightened. Um, shout out to Hoagland. Since we had black hardware, they actually included black screws and washers. And as I said before, our mini toggle switch and our three-way switch were both black to match the hardware. Great job, Jack. That's, a ten that's great attention to detail. Absolutely commend you for that. I'll put Jack we'll thread it on. Get it snug down and set it into place. And it'll actually be secured with a couple of small screws here. So we have everything in position there. Our last step here. will be to connect up our bridge ground with our shielding ground 
with our extra ground wire <coughs> coming off of our three-way snip this guy here snip this one And again, this actual part here is just, this is something I do. Um, everybody has their own ways of doing things. What I may like to do, someone else may say is useless or overkill or not a good way to do it but this way has always worked well for me so I'm always going to do this solder one of our little screw lugs onto our bridge ground flip it out of the way we'll do the same with our ground coming from the bridge, a little dab of flux on there, a little dab of solder, do the same thing we did on our other lugs, we're just closing up the hole. Now, I'm going to take a little small, like a pit guard screw size screw. Run it through these lugs. Come off over here somewhere out of the way screw those down through the shielding foil tape into the body all three connecting with that lug and that screw making a mechanical connection between those now we just want to clean everything up a little bit. Get all of our wires tucked down. out of the way all 
I'll actually get a couple of small zip ties for this. Loop that guy up. wires tucked out of the way these wires all together tuck down here out of the way There. Now. For the true definitive test to see how well we did here. Hopefully we're not going to have to do a lot of chasing and figuring out what went wrong. what it is it, it's because I don't have the, the jack screwed down let's fix that real quick So we have this in position how we want it. Let's straighten this up a little bit. That's straightened with our straight and align with the body edge Inside here, make sure we don't have anything grounding out. Plug in.
is on. And everything is working as it should. So, our last step here is going to be to. <coughs> Tighten everything down. And then we'll put the cavity cover on. As you can see, I'm just hand tightening these with a socket. ratchet on and give it just about a quarter of a turn we don't want to we're not trying to kill these things Tighten down. And then we'll thumb screw here. I'm just going to use our crescent pliers to straighten that out on the inside. But it's not canted. We want our switch to go directly up and down, not canted to one side. So adjust that on the inside. Switch is where we want it. Hold the switch firm. Snug that down. Now we have our knobs from Gentric Guitars that were custom made to match this body. Man, these things look good. We're going to sit them on here. We have split shafts. Um, with a split shaft, you don't want to put the screw side these have a set screw you don't want to put that on the side pushing it in to bend that shaft always make sure your set screw is lined up on the split of the shaft you take your allen wrench Snug it up.
Now we'll take our cavity cover. in place Snug up our screws. Oh. Lift that side up a little bit because I had a wire that was wanting to be trapped, but got it out of the way. And there you have it. That completes the build process of the Panic Ink Showcase base. Um, still have to set up the base. Uh, we've got a setup kit that was sent to us by Stumac that we're going to use. For that, um, that will be one of the next upcoming videos. Um, thanks again to Peg City Pickups, Hoagland Customs, Zentrix Guitars for the pickups, wiring harness, and knobs that we used in this part of the build. There are wires, or excuse me, our uh, knobs, our pickups. Uh, special thanks to KSM for the foundation bridge. DR Strings for the Black Beauties. Solo Guitars for our neck. And Grover Tuners for the tuners. Um, thanks for following along with the build process of this base. Um, it means a whole lot to us. Um, this was a, a really cool project to, to undertake. Um, be sure to like and subscribe to the channel, uh, to keep up to date with all of our other projects for the completion of this, uh, the setup portion, um, the actual demonstration uh, we're going to get together with some some local musicians and have a jam session showing off what this thing can do um, and we've got more showcase bases coming up we've got our version 2 coming up that uh, so far we're going to be partnering with Kaler uh, for one of their bass tremolos and with Stonewall Customs for a set of their alternate dimension base humbuckers. Um, all that going into a Panic Ink W25 body. But not going to get ahead of ourselves. We'll, we'll tackle that one when we get to it. Uh, again, be sure, like, subscribe to the channel. Go check out our Facebook page. Give us a like there. Um, check out all of our sponsors. Uh, the links for Peg City Pickups, Hoagland Customs, and Zentrix will be in this video. Uh, the links for all of the other uh, partners are on our website at panicink.com. 
Go check out our merch shop. Get yourself a t-shirt or a hat or a sticker or whatever you, you find on there that you may like. Um, really helps us out a lot. Um, thanks again. We'll catch you guys on the next one.